In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful, the one who has created and designed everything, the utmost perfection, the wise creator who created everything for a reason and a purpose. And may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon his beloved and pure messenger, the peak of his creation and the symbol of humanity, the Holy Prophet Muhammad. And for his immaculate progeny of the al -Bayt, especially the leader of our time, the wearied savior, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance and make us all among his dedicated and sincere servants. So I just want to tell you that I will not be translating everything I said in Arabic to English. We'll be talking about different topics, especially for those who's able to speak both languages. Just one thing for our English, um, inshallah, speakers. Sayyidah Zahra, salamullah alayha, the mother of her father, that lady, I think one of her main purposes in life is to teach people the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. We find in her speech of Fadak, the Fadak speech that she made at the mosque, you find that Sayyidah Fatima, when she spoke about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she was telling those Arabs that they were standing there, unfortunately. Majority of them were ignorant. Just to, You have to understand that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he spent 23 years teaching Islam. But he, please listen to this point, he wasn't able to teach and educate fully the entire society. He was able to educate certain individuals that they will, were willing to put the time to learn fully Islam, and he was relying on them after he departed for that group to teach the entire Muslim nation. And the main one of those individuals was Imam Ali, السلام, the commander of the faithful. And to tell you that Imam Ali, when he was five years old, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he used to take him to the cave of Hira. And he used to take private lessons with the Prophet before the Prophet started his mission as a Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's why Ali, alayhi salam, Imam Ali, he was able, he understood fully the message of Islam from the beginning of the message of the Prophet. So Rasulullah was relying on that man, Imam Ali, at the time when the Prophet departed. Imam Ali was just 33 years old. He was still in his prime time. He was able to educate and communicate and connect with the entire generation. That's why if you want, just we will answer one question tonight. What is the reason and the purpose behind why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us? And if we were able to answer this question, inshallah, we please the heart of Fatima, who she was trying to educate the people in the mosque and tell them the answer of that question. We find this famous verse in the Quran Kareem saying the reason and purpose behind creation. I think you heard it before, which is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal-insa illa li'abudu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stating in the Holy Quran saying that he created jinn and mankind for one reason, except to worship me. Now unfortunately, please you have to understand this point and keep it crystal clear that when we translate the Quran from Arabic to English, we ruin the meaning. And the English Quran is not God's words. It's man translation. The Arabic version of the Quran, it's 100% God's words. Because Allah revered it in Arabic. And we're not against any language. But just you have to understand, if you're reading an English translated Quran, you have to know that you're not containing the entire meaning of the verses when you're reciting it. So now what is the meaning of the word worship me? If now I ask you what is the meaning of the word worship me? Can you help? Can you think about how you can apply the word worship me? Your minds will go to what? How to worship God? Praying, fasting, pilgrimage, tasbih Fatima, and doing these rituals. Unfortunately, the meaning of ibadah and abada is not just these applying these rituals in Islam. You know, in the old days, when our grandparents in the villages, they used to clear and clean the roads so they are able to pass through, right? So if there is marbles, rocks, stones, anything on the ground, like anything wood, when they are trying to remove that, to open a way to pass through, that's called ibadan, literal, literally in Arabic language. Sallallahu Muhammad wa So the literal meaning of the word ibadah is to clear the street and path through. Now, that's why we call at tariq ghayr mu'abbada. When the road is not clean, we call it, it's not mu'abbada. So the first meaning of ibadah, as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the road and the path in this life will be filled not with stones, but with hardships. 
not with wood, but with sufferings and trials and tribulations and tests. And Allah will keep testing us. And the more the human being is able to use guidance, rituals, religion, and his experience and knowledge to remove these obstacles from his way, in a wise way, he actually did ibad. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested you, and you showed Allah the most wise, calm reaction, right? If someone is angering you, for example, or you're facing a trial, like being a husband is one of the huge responsibilities in life. And by the way, the more you're growing, the more your responsibilities are what? Growing, increasing or decreasing with you when you grow. Responsibilities will increase. There is no resting in this life. There is no actual resting. Imam al Hussein salam said that leave rest for the grave. In the grave and the afterlife, you will be having that permanent rest. In this life, there's just temporary rest. When you sleep, you're having that temporary rest. When you're hugging your mother, that's a temporary psychological rest. When you're hanging out with them good brothers and sisters in faith, when we're having the gatherings in the name of Fatima alayhi salam, when we're smiling and bringing that positive energy to the place, that's temporary rest. There is nothing called permanent rest in this life. It's just filled with trials, tribulations, sufferings, responsibilities. And you have to understand this point from a young age so you can be ready for life. One of our major issues that our newer generation is facing, that because of the technology and the AI and everything is fast and easy nowadays, right? Fast food, fast service, everything is fast, subhanAllah. No one has patience to wait for anything anymore. So they think that, okay, being a husband is easy and simple. Being a father is easy and simple. And they, prepare, psychologically, they are convinced with this point. Now, after marriage, they are shocked. What's going on? There's a huge pressure. It's not as I expected. And if the expectation is higher than reality, you're falling into a huge, dark, like dark, call it universe, that you will be stressed, depressed, pressured, and so on and so forth, because you were convinced with that point. Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad wa Muhammad. So the meaning of ibadah Allah is expecting when he's putting a test in front of me for me to remove it and to continue becoming more closer to him inshallah. That's why the meaning of abada, the practical meaning of it is to go submit, humiliate yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a level that you're not disobeying him or violating his obligations which as we say wajib is something that we must do. We must not violate the wajib and not do it. Haram is something forbidden. I have to stay away from it and obey Allah in His words. Now, do you see the word Abada in the Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran al Kareem, He gave us different categories of Ibadah. He said some individuals, if they did not do Ibadah for Allah, they will be doing Ibadah for something else. You know, nowadays some teenagers and youth they claim full freedom. They claim that they can have that, sorry, that religion and faith and Islam is limiting their freedom. I will ask you a question. If someone did not worship Allah or do ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be doing ibadah for something else. And the first example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave in the Quran Karim, if you left him, if you didn't, if you didn't follow him, you will be following your own whim and desires. Allah said, أَرَأَيْتَ مَنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ You don't, you have to consider that there's some individuals, Allah is saying in the Quran, they took their whim and desires, they, their own what? Gods. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning in other verses in the Quran, Kareem, some individuals, if they didn't follow Allah, they will be following human beings, other human beings like them. Allah, when he spoke about Pharaoh, Pharaoh, he said, that Fir'aun, he used the word Abada in one of the verses of Fir'aun toward Bani Israel. He said, Abadta Bani Israel. What is the meaning of Abadta? You enslaved them and you made them submit their will to your will. Now these people are not following the path of God. 
removing these obstacles and burdens to pass through, they are following the path of the Pharaoh himself. That's why the prophets, Ahlul Bayt salam, Sayyidah Fatima and Imam Ali salam, they used to tell us, لا تكن عبد غيرك وقد خلقك الله حرة. Do not be enslaved by someone else. Do not worship someone else. And Allah created you what? Free. The true meaning of freedom is when we understand the purpose of our creation and we follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please, dear brothers and sisters, I'm telling you actually the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants to make the path easier on us. Following one source, easier than following hundred different sources. Mentally and psychologically, when you know that, okay, I'm just following Allah in life then I will not be confused by the different thoughts and feelings and whims and desires of other people around me. For example, scarf. The lifestyle of the female will be so easy and simple if she followed Fatima. It will be so easy and simple. It's not complicated. It will not confuse you. You know the path. You know the light. This is your lifestyle. This is your identity and who you are. If you didn't follow Fatima, there is hundreds of different models and actors and this is wearing this, this color, that color, this hairstyle, and so on and so forth. You will be confused which path I have to take in life. The path of Fatima is easy and simple. One path that all our sisters can follow, where it can give them clarity in their mind to concentrate and focus on fulfilling the responsibilities and obligations in life. If we followed Ahl al-Bayt, it's one source. Allah kept us, He told us, Inni tarikum fikum. I'm leaving behind two weighty things. Easy. Two sources. Quran and Ahlul Bayt. The words of Ahlul Bayt. Follow it. Have a clarity in your mind. No confusion anymore. And focus on fulfilling your responsibilities in life. And that's why Allah wants us to be free. Your parents. We always tell you in Islam. Respect your parents. Obey your parents. Lower the wing of humiliation before your parents. Even if you humiliated yourself in front of your parents, that's not a humiliation, by the way. The only people that you can humiliate yourself before them, Allah, He said, just your parents. By the way, in Islam, it's forbidden to humiliate yourself before any person in this life. But Allah said in the Quran, even if your parents told you to do something that will lead to disobedience of Allah, Allah is telling you, disobey them. Allah is giving you that authority and power to disobey any person in this life. So look how freedom, practically I can give you an example. My friends came and told me, listen to this haram music. Watch this nude video. Smoke this cigarette or marijuana or weed or, or any example. I'm a person standing there, someone is inviting me to something. I scan this something. Is Allah is pleased with this action? No, I say no. I disobey. That's freedom. Freedom is not if any person out there invited you to anything, you will follow blindly. That's slavery. That's actually slavery. Allah wants you to be successful and to reach the, the best version of yourselves. And because the line of knowledge is endless and He wants you to become the most closer to Him. But after you free yourselves from what? from the craziness of mankind around you. The only source of light is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what Sayyidah Fatima was trying to say to those individuals in the sermon of Fadak. She was telling them, you're worshipping your tribal systems. You're worshipping what your parents used to worship. You're worshipping your own desires and whims. Even Ali. Ali, he wasn't fighting for authority. He didn't care about caliphate, trust me. He is the one who said to Ibn Abbas, he was fixing his sandals. I don't know if I passed the time. Forgive me if I took much time. He was fixing the sandals. And he told Ibn Abbas, he told, oh Ibn Abbas, do you know what the caliphate of Islam worth for me? Ibn Abbas asked him, what, O oh commander of the faithful? He said, less than what this sandal worth. Subhanallah. He said, my purpose of me seeking power for two reasons. To hold and to strengthen righteousness and to defeat oppression. That's the only two reasons for Ali, to spread justice and defeat oppression. 
Other than that, Ali does not care about money or fame or power. Fatima doesn't care about a land called Fadak, and she's not attached to that land. But she was trying to teach them from her sermon the true meaning of freedom, to free ourselves from any attachments and addictions and obsessions. It's like a teenager, sixth grader, playing PS5 or Xbox, and he has homework, for example. And all of a sudden you go, and just you take it from him, or you turn it off. And you see the anger coming out, and the screaming, and the reaction. That reaction, because he's attached to that what? That came. Allah wants you to be detached fully, and to focus, concentrate on fulfilling your obligations in life, and to be in your different roles perfect like Fatima. So for the sisters, Allah will consider you perfect being. There is no perfection in life, you understand this. But yes, there is someone who's perfecting his role as a son at home, as a daughter at home. The way you treat your parents. And so if I want to see if you're a great son at home, I have to ask your parents to evaluate you, by the way. It's not, oh, I'm saying I'm a good son. Your father has to say that. It's not, I'm saying I'm a good son. My mother has to say that. And inshallah, in the future, you can perfect your role as a student, as a Muslim living in the West. And what you have to do for the sake of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. Trust me, brothers, the future in this, in any community, is relying on you, on you understanding Islam and being aware and becoming like practical Muslims and activists to be able, inshallah, to help and serve and support the message of Islam. Because as our scholars said, you are the generation of Al Mahdi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten, hasten his reappearance. And he's relying on you. And Imam Al Mahdi, majority of his army and his soldiers and the people relying on will be from the youth. Prime time, prime age. And if you're not spending your time now seeking knowledge and spirituality and understanding existence and asking questions and seeking knowledge, and if you're wasting your time on. GTA 6, so some games coming next year. If you're actually like just planning how to finish this game and that game and go to this place or that place and finish this movie and that movie, we're not against that, by the way. You have to have moderation and balance. But your number one priority is Allah and Islam and understanding your existence, where you're going after that. So this is my message in the birthday of Sayyidah Fatima, alayhi salam. Ummu Abiha, the mother of her father, the lady of light, lady of heaven. There is a lot to speak about, but there is no much time. But I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, help us, support us to become an actual follower of Fatima, to actually please her heart, because she is the only interceder on Judgment Day for her lovers and for her followers, insha'Allah ta'ala. Nas'alullah ta'ala an yahdiyana, yahdi awladana, يرحم موتانا جميعا أن يرزقنا شفاعة محمد وآل محمد إن شاء الله في مستقر من رحمته إنه سميع مجيب الدعاء يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا بفاطمة إلا غفرته ولا هما أو غما أو حزنا بفاطمة إلا فرجته وأذهبته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته وعفيته بفاطمة عليه السلام ولا حاجة إلا يسرتها وقضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين على حب فاطمة الزهراء بنت محمد سيدة نساء العالمين رحم الله ورفع صوته بذكر الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد. الله